Hey everyone, welcome back to the clinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, that website address for you is www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. And we want to thank you guys very much for sending in your questions and submitting some of your thoughts that you have on, on topics you'd like us to cover. We really thank you for that. And uh, usually myself or Don or, you know, we'll either do it independently like we are today or together. Or, if the question or topic requires bringing on a guest guru, someone to kind of share their insights on the topic, we'll do that. And we have a lot of fun doing those interviews. But today, uh, today the question I got was regarding the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. And it's a pretty basic, generic question. Uh, what does the FDA do in clinical trials? So the FDA is actually a large organization. They're, you know, as the name would imply, they're responsible for making sure the food and the drugs that we take are safe and effective. Um, now, as far as foods, they, they just make sure that they're safe. But the drugs, they want to make sure that the medical claims being made by the drug companies are, are true. And so this takes us into clinical trials. And the FDA gets criticized a lot for... Maybe, you know, being a little inefficient or there's a lot of libertarians out there that just like to harp on what the FDA is not good at. But a lot of people don't understand the work that just one clinical trial requires. And we're talking about decades long work just for one drug to make it all the way from preclinical studies to phase four and finally being approved by the FDA. And the FDA works in step with the drug companies throughout every process of this entire clinical trial, all these phases, so from preclinical trials to the animal trials to the healthy volunteer trials and the phase two, three, and four trials, they are involved, and even after the drug is approved, they're closely monitoring for any adverse events. Um, should a drug need to be pulled off the market because it's unsafe? But basically, FDA is responsible for making sure that the drug is safe, safe enough to use, and also effective enough to be marketed uh, for treating or curing certain conditions. So when there's when a drug's being developed in the labs, you know, the drug company works with the FDA on developing a protocol for that drug. And so the protocol, you know, the FDA makes sure that the protocol is fairly testing the drug. And what I mean by fair is they're giving the drug a chance to show the side effects as opposed to having a protocol which would allow the, the side effects to, to show up or to not show up. Now as far as ethics is concerned, uh, the IRBs are responsible for ethics. So making sure that the drugs do not, that there's no unnecessary harm being done to the study participants in the trials. But the FDA is the one responsible for making sure that the clinical trials are being conducted ethically and um, with good procedures called good clinical practices. Furthermore, most clinical trials test drugs, a new drug of some sort, or if their device is a device. The FDA also has what's called GLP, good laboratory practices where they make sure that those drugs for the clinical trials are safe and manufactured in a way which would not cause any unnecessary harm to the study participants. So we're talking about tons of initials and dates and if you make a mistake you gotta cross it out and initial it. And The idea of this is if there's ever a mistake or an error, which happens a lot, that error can be traced back to one person. So, and it also reduces or prevents um, fraud, because if you've got to do all this paperwork, there's a paper trail that eventually leads, would lead the auditors back to the person who committed the fraud. Now, speaking of audits, the FDA routinely audits not only the drug companies doing the trials, so they routinely audit their manufacturing facility, they routinely audit all their, all their documentation for the clinical trials, the protocols, all the adverse events. They also audit their research clinics. 
So if there's a high enrolling site in any trial, the FDA is more than likely going to go there. Now they also audit any sites, just at random. Obviously if there's red flags coming up like the research clinics enrolling a lot of people or a lot more than everyone else is enrolling, uh, the FDA will probably show up at that site. But just at random, they'll just pick some sites and go show up. And this is usually happens also in the pivotal trials. So in the phase three trials, are usually called pivotal trials because they're the phase where it's kind of like the last phase before the FDA will have to make a decision on whether that drug is approved or not. So during these pivotal trials, the FDA will there'll be a lot of FDA activity in regards to that particular drug compound. Um, so the FDA is responsible for making sure that the protocols are written in a way that cannot hide adverse events and they must clearly show that the drug has some benefit to it and that benefit outweighs the risks. So that's that's kind of what the FDA does and it, this is just in a nutshell but these processes that I just brought up and, and these phases of clinical trials like I said can last decades. They're decades long and the FDA is there every step of the way working hand in hand with the drug company. Um, and many times drug companies get rejected and they could get rejected for any reasons. I know uh, this one company they got rejected for this cancer drug or, or for this novel way of bringing about a, a chemotherapy drug so they develop a new technology to introduce the chemo drug to the patient um, it was rejected because the labs where the drug was being manufactured at the at the drug company um, there was some temperature issues there was it wasn't unclear what the temperature was on certain days so the FDA said this is rejected we're not sure that the study was being done accordingly according to both GCP good clinical practice and GLP good laboratory practice so at the end of the day while the FDA is not really in charge of ethics during clinical trials that's the IRB's role the FDA is in charge of safety and they make sure that um, the drugs being manufactured for the clinical trials are safe and that the clinical trials themselves cannot hide side effects that the drug companies may know exist so then they can you know create a protocol that works around the side effects so they don't show the FDA makes sure that it doesn't do that and they oftentimes before the trial even starts the FDA will meet with the drug company and the drug company will kind of show them their protocol and the FDA will look at it and say okay this is fine but you need to add this you need, you need to show more efficacy here. Efficacy meaning does the drug work? Or we need more safety data. You know, we need to know whether this drug is actually safe enough. And according to this protocol, we can't be sure of that. So go back and, and revise the protocol and bring it back to us. So this is an ongoing process that the FDA um, is in charge of. And, you know, they don't get much glory for doing all this stuff. And, Luckily for us, they do do it, and, and they are a function of government, because I can't imagine any private company that would want to do this. This is decades of work, uh, just to make sure our, our drugs are safe. And sure, the FDA does a lot of things which people may not like. They may be inefficient, but that's a, that's a topic for another day. This one just answers the question, what does an FDA do, or what does the FDA do during the clinical trials process? So hopefully this helps you. Keep bringing the questions to us. We love to answer them. And um, if you'd like more clarification on this topic, just ask us again and, and we'll do a, a more detailed video on this. Thanks for watching. It's Dan from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com.